today is we're talking about using Clubhouse to grow your business. Uh, now, I know we've had a lot of you guys, uh, Christina and April, I know you guys have been on here a fair amount. You've seen a lot of examples of how businesses are using Clubhouse. Um, there was a particular experience that I saw a while back, which I covered in my article in Entrepreneur, uh, where a lady was pitching Grant Cardone on a business idea. And in that particular case, the way she was pitching her business financially, it just didn't make sense to Grant. Um, there wasn't the opportunity in it that, that she thought there was. But as a result of someone else hearing this and seeing something that no one else did, uh, Trey Taylor, for those of you who, who may know, uh, he ended up pointing out that this lady had a stream of revenue, a six-figure stream of revenue in her business that she had no idea even existed. And because of that, that completely changed the opportunity within that deal. And they ended up doing something together with Grant. So this is an example of how this, you know, how this can be particularly effective for everyone. All right. I see we got Matt and Kevin in here now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make you guys mods. All right. How you doing, Jimmy? Good to, good to hear you, buddy. Good to see you too, Kevin. Matt, good to see you, brother. Yeah, good to see you too, Jeremy. Always, uh, always looking for you to start good rooms like this, man. This is awesome. Awesome. So I see we got, uh, we got Jason popped in here as well. Here's what I want to do. I want to go ahead and open this up for some questions. I know Jason's got a question in particular. Um, Jason, you want to go ahead and roll with your question real quick? Hey, thanks a lot, Jeremy. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I have a question. I, I guess it'd be for Matt and then possibly uh, Kevin right after. So I've created a weekly live stream show for dad entrepreneurs or dadpreneurs as I like to call them that I'm, I'm also pulling the audio from this show to form a podcast. And I was wondering what's the most effective way to build a loyal community on clubhouse that'll follow me there to the show. And then over time organically, but obviously strategically trying to turn the show into a reliable income stream. Awesome. That's yeah, a great that's question. A great... Oh, sorry, Matt. Uh, I just want to give a little little bit of backstory for everybody who's listening. So Matt, this falls right up your alley. Um, for those of you who are listening, Matt's got a great group that, that he put together. And then Kevin obviously has scaled countless businesses. So Matt, go ahead and go. And then Kevin, you can go ahead and follow up after that. Yeah, I think it's a great question, Jason, about, you know, how do you build a community using Clubhouse? And I think the, the quick answer is, you know, and the, and the simple answer is you just come into Clubhouse and come into rooms and look to authentically contribute, look to authentically give uh, and, and start to create some relationships. Then you start what they call rooms on Clubhouse, right? Like we're in right now, start a room on the topics that are interesting to you and give to the people that show up and want to want to talk and hear and converse about those topics. And I think that's how you build an audience here, by leading with uh, the people first, giving authentically, giving real value. I think your community will find you. And then I think you'll be able to pull those people uh, to your podcast because they'll want to go deeper. They'll want to go deeper than that discussion you had in that room. They'll want to hear more from you uh, and go further down the line of, of what you're talking about. So I think that's the way to do it. You build the community here, lead with giving first, and then you pull them into your podcast. I hope that helps, Jason. Yeah, certainly. Thank you. Hey, Sharon, go ahead and mute your mic, please. Great answer, Matt. Hey, it's Kevin. I'm going to go next. Uh, yep. So, so thank, thank you. And, and I, I think Matt, great answer. I, I agree with everything you said. I think uh, the other part of it, I believe that Kevin, I think we, we lost your audio for a second there. is what what are we all doing on clubhouse where yep can you can you hear me sorry can you hear me now you, we can hear you now kevin go ahead hear me now okay yes so, we can hear you. sorry about audio so what what basically right so you know, when, when Matt and I say, let's get a room going and we bring in a few people, it's, it's, it's a collaboration of my followers and Matt's followers and, and all of that. So I think this is, this is an important thing.
Kevin, I don't know if you're still with us, but uh, we seem to have lost your audio. All right, Kevin's muted back out, so I'm I'm guessing he's uh, he's having some technical issues there. Um, maybe Trey wants to chime in a little bit. Uh, Jason, can you go ahead and repeat your question for Trey real quick? Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. So the question I asked was, um, I've created a weekly live stream show for dad entrepreneurs, or I call them dad dadpreneurs, and I'm also pulling the audio from that show to form a podcast. And I was wondering what was the most effective way to build a loyal community on Clubhouse first that would follow me there. And then over time, organically, but, you know, with some strategy, turn this show into a reliable stream of income. Yeah, well, Jeremy, thanks for showing me the uh, easy question first. <laughs> I think that's what we're all trying to figure out. Exactly right. Uh, I think it does start with some level of content. Uh, so you're doing that. I've actually seen one of the episodes of Dadpreneur, and I thought it was, uh, you know, interesting, compelling, conversational, um, you know, like relation. I could I could relate to it. So that was good. Uh, and I think uh, I haven't seen you, Jason, hosting rooms on Clubhouse about dadpreneurs, but I could be wrong. Maybe I've just missed them. So it seems to me that that's the first thing um you know, to do here and then get into some of the larger stages and uh, and talk to those guys about, you know, how is it balancing? I mean, Kevin's a great one. How is it balancing being an entrepreneur and the obligations and uh, joys that we have as fathers as well? Uh, and, you know, have people have people doing that. Um, Matt is a great, um, you know, is a, is a great example of how do you go from, from nothing to 75,000 followers in, a, in, in three or four weeks. And it's all about being present and providing value and, and being in proximity. Um, so that, that for whatever it's worth, that would be my answer to that. And something I want to add on to that, so Trey pointed out some, some great specific examples there, but Matt has taken this to an entirely new level than most people where aside from doing what he normally does by creating great relationships and, and constantly adding value to those relationships, he's also got processes behind the scenes to ensure that everything moves smoothly, every, nothing falls through the cracks. He's actually got a full-time VA strictly to handle the DMs that are coming in through Instagram as a result of what he's doing on, on Clubhouse. So Matt, do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure, man. Uh, absolutely. Thanks, Jeremy. You know, I think it's really, really about continuing the conversation, right? So Clubhouse is a great place to uh, to create new relationships, to strengthen existing relationships, and to start conversations to see what resonates, to see uh, you know where there are synergies, and then I think that that conversation continues uh, in you know Instagram DMs or in Twitter if that's you know if that's what you use. But that's that's the way we kind of take uh, communication to the next level off this platform. And that's kind of the simplest interface. So, so yeah, I've got processes behind connecting with people uh, here on the app. I've got, uh, you know, staff and, and process of connecting with people in, in DMs and following up with people and, you know, kind of segmenting which buckets we put them into. Uh, you know, we've run real estate rooms on this app. I've run rooms with, with Kevin Harrington, who was just here where we've listened to business pitches. And so those are different buckets, right? And then I've just, you know, we've got some different uh, things that we work on, different businesses we own. So we're creating relationships with people here on the app and, you know, bringing them off onto Instagram DMs or emails or whatever it is. And then we're putting them into those segmented buckets so we can have those conversations about projects we're working on and opportunities that are there. So uh, I think this, you know, is a great inception point. And then I think what we do after that uh, just like always, you know, uh, is where the real value is. And that's in the follow up and furthering the connections that we make uh, one to one here on the app. That's so, great. I'm, well, Go ahead, so, if I, so if I'm hearing you correctly, uh, once they connect with you here, you sort of spin them back to more clubhouse rooms and kind of just, you know, put them in, I guess you call it, you call it buckets. So you kind of give everybody their sort of niche or their favorite area to kind of hang out and play in. And then at some point, they they come back. So how do you how do you get them back into um, a, an authentic conversation with you, or do you still so, still sort of take them through? Like you just keep them kind of in that in that place until they can really have like like a specific uh, reason to contact you. Like say I want to, you know, I want to be on your show, or I want to 
you know, I want to work with you, Matt. I want to do a, um, a live, a live uh, event with you and some of the other stuff you do. Like how, how, where does it go from it being strictly online kind of clubhouse and in the DMS to an actual like conversation with you about, I guess, uh, some kind of a arrangement, a deal. Yeah. How does it go to that next level? That's a great question, Jason. Yeah. So, you know, I think really the, the real key to it is if you're reaching out and it doesn't matter if it's me reaching out to somebody, you know, or, or anybody here reaching out to somebody, if you're reaching out to somebody for the purpose of doing business with them or working on a project or, you know, you think you've got something in terms of partnership to offer to them, you've got to lead with what's in it for them first. Right. And so the, the people that I end up going to that next level of communication with are the, are the people that are very clear about what they're working on, what they're asking, and also very clear about, you know, how it might benefit me or how it's in my best interest or how it aligns with my goals to maybe look at this or discuss this with them or do that with them. I think if somebody comes to me and says, you know, hey, can you help me with this? Or, hey, I'd love you to be my mentor about this. That's not a real enticing offer for, for me, right? But if somebody comes to me and says, hey, I've got this, this, and this set up, I think it aligns really nicely with what you set up over here. You know, could we talk for a few minutes and, and me show you how I can bring value to you in that way? You know, then, it, then it's about what it does for, for me, what it does for the person that you're approaching. So I think, you know, everything is in the approach, right? And, and the conversations that go to that next level are the conversations where somebody has come to me or where I've come to someone and offered some kind of win-win scenario uh, or at least the possibility of a great, you know, scenario or a great project like that. And that's when the conversation goes to the next level. So in that way, Jason, it's just like real life. You have conversations with a lot of people and some of those conversations go to the next level and some don't. That's great insight, Matt. And and something I want to add on to that is it's important not to treat this in a transactional manner, right? So obviously we need to make sure that we're going in and we're, we're providing value, but we also have to make sure that we're not going in and doing a thing for somebody with the expectation that they're going to immediately turn around and do something for us in exchange for that, right? Approach it the same way you would any other relationship. If you're going in, you're not going to, you're not going to get married overnight, right? You're going to slowly build that relationship in most cases. Um, So if you approach it from that perspective, you're going to have a really solid uh, foundation to build that relationship from rather than trying to get quick wins out of it right out of the gate. So I know we've got uh, we've got a bunch of people here who have joined the group while we've been talking. Uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, go ahead and raise your hand. We'll pull you up, pull you up, and uh, we'll get one of the experts here to answer any questions you guys have. Um, in the meantime, if anyone on stage has anything they'd like to share, uh, feel free to go ahead and unmute and and share what you'd like to share. Hi, I'd love to be able to speak. My name is Christina Pollock. I'm from Carmel, California. How I hope you guys are doing well this morning. I am a digital entrepreneur, a lifestyle blogger and influencer. And now I'm actually a course creator, which is going to be launching next month. It's called Inspiring Brands Academy. And I'm educating female small business owners about digital branding, marketing, advertising, and publicity strategies. So I'm quite busy. I'm pretty much maxed out on a lot of my social networks. I've reached hundreds of thousands of people. But now that I'm new to Clubhouse and want to grow in here and be really strategic and efficient with my time, my question for those of you on the panel here is, do you think it's better to basically go out and find some of the leaders, the people who are doing really well on Clubhouse and have a great reach for my target audience and contact them and basically find out what types of Clubhouses they are hosting and how I can become a panelist on there versus starting my own Clubhouses and then really promoting that to my current social audience? So you want to do both of those. When you're starting your own rooms, you're creating your your kind of tribe, your your community. When you're going into other rooms, you're leveraging into that audience, right? There's other established people on here who just by the the nature of their following, they're going to have huge rooms. That's why you see certain people, like if Matt kicks off a room, you know, you're generally going to see at least a few hundred, generally, you know, a thousand or more people in the room. So when you go into those larger rooms, you're not going to have as much of an opportunity to speak, but when you do, you're speaking in front of more people. So as long as you're out there in these rooms providing real valuable information uh, that people can use to benefit themselves in some way, then you're going to be in a strong position. But at the same time, you want to make sure you're also creating your own rooms because you need to build your own community as well. Um, 
I suspect somebody else in here would like to chime in as well. Um, yeah, I'd love to. Hey, everybody, I'm Go Sharon Beckety. So um, I love that question because for me, we're all busy, right? Like, oh my God, another platform. How the heck am I going to do this? And just completely transparent, I jump in. I get asked to be on a panel. I'm a yes person. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to try it. I'm going to taste it. It's obviously the newest and, and hottest platform out here because it's it's like jumping in on a sneaky conversation, right? Like we all love to hear what other people are talking about. And then we get to leave quietly if we want to. So we're like tasting it and you know, checking out where you're going to be able to fit in, I think is a, a great thing. You know, what did I do? I'm just gonna tell you, I, I look at noon, you know, I had a, a, a client cancel on me, so I have some extra time. So I'm gonna take that extra time and I'm going to taste Clubhouse because I'm the type of person that's just gonna start one, right? Or I'm gonna say yes if somebody asks me to jump in, obviously, because if you have an opportunity to have organic reach, we all know that this is not going to be the case for long. It's just like LinkedIn and TikTok is where the uh, the best organic reach is right now. Um, but now Clubhouse has been added to that that menu. So taste it up, everybody. That's that's my input for today. Love it. Did we have anyone else who wanted to chime in on that question? Yeah, I just want to add something. <clears throat> I think what you said, Jeremy, about <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> my voice is funny. Um, about doing your own groups and then going to some of the bigger groups. But I also want to put a plug in for some of the smaller groups because that's a place that you can go into arenas that you've got expertise or you want to learn more about. You can speak, you can ask questions, and you can start to have a link of relationships. So you go into the big rooms, you can be you know, there for hours and may or may not get to ask your question or get your voice heard. But if you go into a smaller room, you can start to meet people and then you can go into their rooms and there'll be other people that have bigger names and bigger stages and you start to get seen and start to make real connections. So I think we often look at, oh, there's like a thousand people in this room or you know, 3000 people or 500 and we want those rooms. I think it's important to also add to the mix smaller rooms in our areas of expertise that we can go in and form relationships and start to be seen more. That's great insight, Dr. K, love it. Love it. Trey, do you want to chime in on anything? No, I think you guys have, have totally covered it. That's exactly it. You know, it's just, I mean, same formula. It's, it's provide that value and uh, participate with what's here already and grow the entire platform by growing your own following. Jeremy, you mind if I add something? Go for it. And then uh, what I'm going to do after that is we're going to uh, mute my mic for a bit and uh, let Sorbani ask some questions as well. Definitely. Christina, I found um, it's about the. I've personally found it's also about the quality of the followers. Um, and what brings that is there's good questions and great questions on the bigger stages. If you get a chance to get up there, ask a great question, one that's going to create content for everybody else in the room. And two, I think Dr. K hit it on the spot. Those smaller rooms are great for building connections. The connections are really what's going to create your um, whole experience here on Clubhouse and build that tribe. But I just wanted to add, ask great questions like you did. Thank you guys for all of your answers. I really appreciate it. All right. We're going to go ahead and let Sorbani ask some questions here. So just give us one second to uh, rearrange the mics here. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Um, really interesting stuff. Um, I'm, for anybody who didn't catch my hello at the beginning, I'm a consumer reporter uh, at Fox 13 in Tampa. And so I really like to highlight new products and new services, new platforms that are out there to help people grow their brand, grow their business, make some money, some connections, things that help make their life a little bit less stressful um, and easier. So I would just love to ask the question, um, how do you see this this helping in terms of being a consumer tool? Um, how can people best use it uh, to leverage? Let's let's start with maybe a, a personal brand. And Jeremy, I'll use your uh, guidance as to whose brain we should pick on that. Let's let um, let's let Matt go ahead and answer that. And uh, April, I know you've been using it a fair amount lately. Why don't you go ahead and chime in after Matt? 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, great question. So, you know, leveraging a personal brand on Clubhouse, I, I think you kind of look at it and think about it the same way that you would think about, uh, you know, how you would leverage a podcast. You know, it's a really uh, personal medium that allows you to create uh, and communicate with an audience that feels like they really know you, right? So I think you could look at Clubhouse in much the same way, but instead of recording a podcast episode and giving it a title and uploading it to, to iTunes and syndicating it, you are starting a room and titling that room and uh, you know inviting people who are interested in that subject to come you know, and invite them into a conversation about it. So I think, you know, the way that you leverage and, and start leveraging a personal brand is, is very much the same way that you would do do that with a podcast or even a blog. Um, you just start to authentically uh, put out there, uh, you know, the, the information and the expertise that you have, and you'll start to slowly gain that audience. And then I think there are ways that you can grow that quickly on Clubhouse with strategic alliances with other content providers other people that have audiences built as well. And I think that's a way to kind of uh, expedite and speed up the process of growing, a, you know, an influence base on this app. But I think it's uh, very much the same as it's always been. You just look to authentically connect with the people that resonate with your message. And this is just another great platform that, that speeds that communication process up a little bit. I hope that helps. Awesome. Yeah. All, right. All, right. All right. April, you're next. <laughs> Got the echoing on. Um, I'll second that. I, I, I started using Clubhouse at the beginning of January and I've pretty much been on every day ever since. Um, you can ask my husband. He probably thinks I'm nuts. But um, I actually have not started my own room yet. I've, I've literally been in, in every room I can possibly imagine just trying to um, get those connections and um, really hear from people's stories. Like um, it's one thing to just be in the room and listening, but to really like want to connect with someone um, and show them that, Hey, I am listening to what you're saying and I hear you and I understand what you're going through or whatever the case is. If there's any kind of like connections that you can make um, offline through Insta um, Instagram or Twitter. Um, I think those have been the, the biggest way to grow like people to see my company as it is. And, then, and I know that's a little strange to say because um, I've had Instagram for a few years now. And since joining Clubhouse and talking about my brand and what we're doing, I've probably doubled the number of people on my Instagram just from using this platform alone. And I know that sounds um, kind of funny because one platform is is helping another, but I think, you know, because Clubhouse doesn't have DMs in this way or, or whatever yet, I think it's been a really cool way to not only grow your following here on Clubhouse, but also on Instagram and Twitter and whatever else um, that you can connect people to even through LinkedIn, if you just drop your um, in, your LinkedIn in the in the bio, um, but I will say um, it, it's interesting to be able to hear people's stories and make those um, connections and say, oh, okay, um, I didn't even know this person lived down the street from me, but <laughs> uh, you meet somebody on Clubhouse that you've never met before, and and you know, you realize how how much you have in common, but then you realize how close they are in your network, or even you know. It, it's been in the same circles throughout different platforms, like on Facebook and different groups. So um, it's been a really cool way to see my, my business grow, my, you know, just the eyes on my business um, get put there. So I, and, and for me, I'm just, I'm kind of like just tagging along with Jeremy everywhere he goes. So um, I see that he's a really good speaker and I know that um, he's going to be in good rooms. So I've just been following him and knowing that wherever he's going, I'm going to find good content. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, that made me think of something actually really, I, I looked at your, your bio while you were talking. And you, you grabbed my attention because you said you used to sell popcorn for a living. And then I had to hit full profile because, well, if that's what you used to do, what do you do now? And as a consumer reporter, I was like, hmm, maybe you've got a story that I can profile. Maybe that's something that I'm interested in, in sharing in terms of, of my, my stories that I cover. So that's a good example, I think, guys, of there you go. All of a sudden, there's this connection that I probably wouldn't have known. But that brings me to, to my next question. For somebody who wants to get started after seeing this story, um, and I'll, again, I'll, I'll go to Jeremy for who might answer this question, April, maybe it's you, maybe it's somebody else, but 
how do you set up this profile differently than others? Because look, it's kind of like LinkedIn because it's professional, but we're using emojis and kind of these fun, irreverent ways to describe our own successes. So it's a little bit more light, more chatty. So what are the best ways to present yourself to get started to get the right attention? So I'll go ahead and chime in on that. And then let me just mute you there so we're not echoing each other. Um, I'll start on that. And then I'd also like Trey to go ahead and chime in as well. So your profile, while it has to be professional, it also has to be engaging, right? We have to have some kind of a hook where we're intriguing people, right? So we don't want to just have a, a list of things that we do. We want to talk about how we actually solve problems for people. We want to talk about how we are making their life different in some way through our products or our services. Um, there has to be some personality to the, uh, to the bio. Um, so approach it from that perspective and you're going to see significantly more click through. Like April was talking about how her Instagram has blown up as a result of Clubhouse. Well, in order for that to happen, someone's gonna have to go to your profile. They're gonna have to see that first couple of lines be intrigued enough to blow up the profile to see the whole thing. And then from there, click over to your Instagram or your Twitter uh, or both, if you have them both connected, which frankly you should. So as long as we've got a solid message that conveys the value that we bring in an intriguing way that makes people say, hey, I wanna know more, then you're gonna be in a solid position to actually get people to give it, to, to care about what, you, what you're doing. Um, I want to throw this to Trey for a second because I know he's got uh, he's got a pretty solid bio um, and is a great communicator as well. So, Trey, do you want to add something to that? Yeah, all I tried to do with my bio is to give somebody who would scan it like a really quick appreciation uh, for my street cred, you know, because I think that that's something uh, that when I scan bios, people are, are, are extremely ethereal and I never, you know, I can read the bio and I still don't understand what they do for a living or what's important to them or any of that sort of thing. So I go so far and all of these are lifted ideas. I saw them on other profiles and I said, oh, that's good. I'm going to do that. And so I put my Enneagram on there. I put my uh, Myers-Briggs on there, that sort of thing, so that people understand the perspective that I'm going to bring to it. And then I put the things that, um, you know, sort of I'm most passionate about that I could quantify. So uh, I didn't put that I have two kids on there, although if that's, you know, something for someone to put, that's fine. But I don't get into parenting rooms and that sort of thing. I put the things that are relevant to the rooms and the conversations that I like to have, all of which uh, are designed to sort of say, uh, this is not just some idea that I have. This is something that I do on a daily basis. And that's why I know what I'm talking about. Great insight. So, Bonnie, do you have any other questions you'd like to ask? All right. Do we have anyone in the audience that would like to ask any questions? Uh, feel free to raise your hands if you do. And if not, uh, what I'll probably do here is if some of the other mods want to keep this room running for a bit, uh, we've got one hand up. Let's see. All right, Missy. All right. Right down here. And while we're waiting, if this information is good for um, for anybody that you know, um, what you could do is just use the plus sign at the bottom of your screen and ping other people in here that might be interested in what we're talking about. I see that there's a lot of uh, new people down in the audience and I um, just want to encourage you to use those tools and uh, follow, follow um, the speakers up here. Elena, did you want to chime in on how Clubhouse has helped with your business so far? Yeah, hi. Thanks for pinging me into the room. It's very useful. Um, I was thinking, uh, yeah, I was thinking, how can I grow my business <laughs> uh, uh, in Clubhouse? And currently, I'm a communication coach, and I'm a TEDx organizer and te TEDx coach helping people to um, with their impactful presentations and helping them to get on TEDx stage uh, and uh, to to plan their TEDx talk. So what um, I, I was uh, doing 
basically is I was just doing some rooms on communication, on, on public speaking, and um, how to get on TEDx stage, because this this is a very catchy topic, as I, I realized. And uh, I did not see any impact on my business, to be honest, because currently I'm I'm launching my my six week program, uh, which is called Speak with Impact. So it is like people who are interested in this program are basically my people who know me and who are on, you know, who were in my previous events. So I did not see any impact of Clubhouse apart from a couple of people following me on Instagram. And uh, uh, what I was thinking of is to come up with some kind of uh, 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 document because because the most um, popular topic for me, at least, was and what people keep asking me and all the time I have DMs on this topic is how to how to become a TEDx speaker. So I was thinking of. Uh, doing kind of a pdf uh, with like an ebook with the guidelines how to become a tedx speaker and uh, just offering it on clubhouse for people who are interested who would be asking me for that and uh, this is the way of yeah maybe the way of growing my list but on the other hand i don't see it th that necessarily it will reflect in in growing my business so I'm interested in what are your opinions on this? Yeah, that would definitely be a great idea if you create some kind of product like that that they can download if it's a free download. Um, but make sure you have a system for working them into your funnel. And I use the word funnel loosely. It could be, you know, anything from they go into your CRM and then you start whatever kind of follow-up process you may have with them or they go into a full-fledged funnel system like Infusionsoft or Active Campaign or something like that. But what you want to do is you want to make it super easy for them to get that. Um, there's a couple ways you could do that. They could You could have them DM you with a certain phrase, and then either you or a VA could go and, and reply to all those with a link where they would then go you know, fill out their information, and it would automatically send it to them, and they would now be added to your list. So you have to make the most of these contacts that you're building uh, actually turn them into relationships and not just contacts. So in order to do that, you've actually got to collect that information. Does that is that helpful for you? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's what I was planning to do. So I have this document already. I just uh, have to build all this funnel and, uh, you know, other things uh, as I'm currently in the middle of my launch. So <laughs> I did not do it yet. But yeah, I'm, I think that I will do this and... Uh, yeah, but do you think it will like really help me to grow my business or, or is it just, uh, you know, uh, additional? Because I see, to be honest, I hear a lot of people on Clubhouse who keep saying how they monetize Clubhouse and how it, it worked amazingly for them. But to be honest, I, I don't know if this is, you know, true. <laughs> That's why I'm... I just want to know your honest opinion. Is this really possible to uh, to do this, or is it just another like social media where you can get a couple more followers? Absolutely, it, it is something that can be effective. And Trey, I, I saw you unmuted a second. If you've got something to say, I'll let you add on here in just a second as well. But the key is you have to have a strategy. Where most people are doing this wrong is they're approaching it from the perspective of, "Hey, let me get on this app." Let me, let me listen. Let me maybe ask a question here and there. And that's about the extent of what they're doing. If that's all you're doing, then no, it won't work. But if you're getting out here, you're building relationships from a strategic perspective. You're bringing these people into your, your cycle, your sales cycle, um, or, or leveraging relationships where you can create joint ventures, things like that. Um, all of these things will play a role in the return on investment that you get out of your time that you've invested into Clubhouse. Now, I know um, Matt's not with us anymore, it looks like, but I know he's, he's generated a tremendous amount of revenue from this. Um, Trey, I suspect you have, I don't know that we've directly talked about that. Um, I know I have, I've gotten a lot of business out of it. Um, Dr. K, I, I believe has as well. Cami, uh, who you see up here on the moderator panel, uh, she's created a lot of opportunities, uh, for various partnerships and, and things within her organization. I know Jason's got some things going April as well. Christina's kind of new to this, but I know that 
the moderators up here have done some pretty phenomenal things with the platform. So I know that it's definitely a viable uh, path. Uh, Trey, was there something you wanted to add? Yeah, I mean, I just uh, give you a little pepper with the steak that uh, Jeremy gave you. A couple of things. One, uh, you should get your .club domain. So your name .club. You should definitely get that because that's where we're in the process of building our funnel on that uh, structure right now so that we can send people to get, um, you know, ebooks or to join investment syndicates or whatever it is that, that we're going to do. Um, we've been able to monetize, but again, I think that the people that are here to sell everybody else stick out like a sore thumb. And, um, you know, based on one of Sorbani's questions earlier, you know, my answer to, you know, how, how should people get on or why should they get on? I think you should get here to learn first, right? And that's a bit of a taking, but get in here to learn so that you can give back as well. But there's nothing wrong with people getting on and just soaking up the knowledge that others are, are quick to give. And then monetization, you know, should sort of be the third thing. Uh, but this is at least as effective as any other social platform where you can, uh, where you can, you should be able to drive uh, sales of whatever you uh, provide at a high value. Um, and I think that the uh, intimacy and the trust level that exists on Clubhouse because of the nature of hearing somebody's spoken word is very high. Yeah, I just want to add something. I mean, I think Clubhouse has done phenomenal things for me and my business um, and is it's a, a platform that suits my style and what I do. But I want to speak to, Elena, what you said about is it just like every other social platform? And in a way, it is. It is like any other, and it's only going to work, you know, with what Jeremy said, what Trey said, with that strategy, uh, with coming in, you know, as a learner, as a giver, not just with the sales in your mind. So being an early adopter, if the platform is is where your clients are, and I think there's a lot of people that are here clearly in the, you know, arena you're talking about, and then I think there's no, no magic platform. It's the ones that we put the effort into strategically um, and showing up in a way that is relationship enhancing. So I love it. To me, it's a special platform that resonates with me and with my with my market. At the same time, it is like any other platform and it's going to take the work, the connect, all the things that happen, whether it's Twitter, whether it's TikTok, whether it's Facebook, it doesn't matter what it is, Instagram, it really is like any other. And once you choose whichever ones you're going to be on, on doing what you have to do to make it work for you. Yeah, can I jump in on that too, Jeremy, for a moment? Uh, I'm sorry, what was that? I just wanted to jump in on that one too, if that's okay. Go for it, please. Great. So um, I think it's really important that everybody understands that there's not a lot of ability to break through on some of these other platforms, right? So like Instagram and Facebook, unless you're putting paid ads behind these um, platforms, you're really not going to be able to, to get through to a new client, a new customer. So when there's an opportunity such as Clubhouse coming on board and giving us all the ability to open ourselves up to a whole new audience, I say, you know, yay to that. There's a lot of people I work with, a lot of doctors, I have a media company, I have some podcasts. I have a lot of people that don't want to do video. So for people that are not interested in doing video, or maybe they're not great at writing and they don't like to do the long form or do a blog, this option is, is a really great place to get your brand out there. It's all about attention, right? So if people are, are coming to your profile, I loved all the talk about the bio. I think I, I, think I got to sharpen mine a little bit after this. So I appreciate all the tips, but um, I think that any attention that you can bring to your brand is, is a great opportunity, especially in the crowded spaces of social media. So this is um, great for people that love and appreciate podcasting and Audible. Hey, Trey, I wanted to, I wanted to thank you for that dot club tip because I actually just while we were talking, grabbed my name and another name off, off uh, Namecheap real quick. So thank you for that. Yeah, pro tip is go get your competitor's name too. Hey, I'd love to ask a follow-up question to some of the people who have a little bit more experience on this platform, um, if you don't mind. Go for it. Yep. Um, so uh, as Jeremy mentioned, I'm relatively new to Clubhouse. I uh, speak nationally, but it's been more live. Um, I speak at a lot of events and things like that. And I actually like that. 
Um, and my style, which I suspect transitions well into this particular platform is, it's not so much about every time you have an opportunity to speak that you're spewing out what you do, as much as it is on the live sex, on the live piece, adding value and making sure that you're, you know, what, when you have an opportunity to speak that you're saying something worthwhile. But then for those of you who have done this, right, uh, and you're building an, an audience on a new platform, does that, do you take your own style that way? So, you know, when I'm speaking about marketing, um, I'm not ever really selling anything. I'm bringing insight about data-driven marketing. Um, and then people will naturally, if what you say is compelling, will naturally find you. Is that the best thing to do? Or is it important that when you have an opportunity to speak that you're talking about your business and your brand? Or is the way to do that in your bio? Um, so if you already have, let's say, a lead magnet, is that is the bio the place to just put that and allow people to be compelled by what you say and then go to your bio and follow you that way? Like, what is what resonates most? Because I, I'm going to tell you right now, if again, being new to the platform, if I'm in a room and every time somebody speaks, it's a little bit of a, you know, it's a little bit of a sales pitch to me personally, like it's, it's a little bit of a turnoff. Like, what is the best way to add value? but then also to drive people to your business? Like what is the most elegant way to do that for those of you who've done it? So the, the whole constantly pitching thing is definitely a bad idea. So I, I agree with you that on that, it's gonna turn people off. Um, what you wanna do is definitely have it in your bio, but if you're constantly sharing value like you do when you're on stage, like you do when you're at events talking to people, then people are going to go check out your bio and, and look at that. And then as you are communicating with them through the DMs, which take place on Instagram, not here on Clubhouse, um, then you can further push them towards that uh, rather than just purely hoping that they happen to see it in your bio and, and follow through on it there. But I would definitely say we don't want to get too crazy with the pitching, which I know you already don't do. So the, I, I don't think you have to worry about going that direction. That's just not who you are. Um, but for everybody else who isn't that way, pitch less, share more value, um, and then just build that relationship naturally and go from there. And, and even by pitching, I guess what I mean is like, you know, it, is it important that you even speak about what you do or make a note about what you do, even if you're not selling anything? Or is it just important that you just contribute? And yeah, all of the above. If, I mean, if you're going to talk about what you do, don't just talk about it. And again, I already know that you do this the right way, but when we talk about what we do, if it's like, Hey, I, I do all these great things and I'm awesome and all this, then, then we're going to come off as pretentious and we're going to come off as self-serving. But if you like, let's say somebody asks a question and you can say, well, I had a client that had this problem and we solved it for them by doing X, Y, and Z. And here's how that worked out for them. And maybe you can try that something like that. You're, you're, presenting your you're demonstrating your knowledge your expertise and capabilities without being overly pitchy without being overly self-promotional um, but you're also providing value at the same time by approaching it that way um good good morning good afternoon jeremy can i add something this is sham yes go i don't want i don't want to speak out of order all right and just a quick quick side note hold on before you before you go sham um, for my other moderators, I'm going to have to step away here. Can do you guys want to keep the room running while I'm gone? Yeah, can, we can do that. I can awesome. help till 12. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Thanks guys. Okay. So what I wanted to add just in, in, by way of my experience on clubhouse, I don't pitch at all. And I, I have clients and partnerships that come from from Clubhouse every day. I probably average about 10 to 12 a day since I've been on here on November without pitching because I did not come onto the Clubhouse platform with the mindset of trying to be an influencer. And I think that many folks are getting it wrong when you're coming with that analog mindset of an influencer. That doesn't work here. This community is based upon value. You have to be a value adder here. When you are coming on here trying to use the same vanity metrics that they use on Instagram, Facebook, and a lot of those visually driven social platforms, that aesthetic does not work here because this is a conversation driven platform where folks are going to sit, listen, lean in, and they wanna learn from you. 
They don't care about your stories. They don't care about your reels. They don't care about what you have for dinner or breakfast. They're not gonna be impressed with your filters. They wanna know, can you add value to them while they're sitting in that room listening and learning from you? And if you can't add value, you're never going to get those people into the conversation funnel towards them actually becoming people that are gonna purchase something from you. That's what most people would say, right? Like don't pitch, add value. I guess what I'm asking for myself and maybe for others in the room that this would be helpful for is then that's great and that works really well with my style, but what is the right way to get your business then out there? Is it literally just let me say something interesting on this topic? And then if, if it is in fact uh, um, bio-driven, so now you say something interesting, people go and look at your bio. What should your bio contain ideally to capture your community, you know, to capture if you're trying to build a community? How do you capture those people? How do you actually capture those people? Can I, can I follow up or would somebody else like to say something? I don't want to dominate here. Go ahead, Chance. Okay, so I want to just give, I run a bio room here in the morning and I don't, I'm not pitching that. I'm just going to give you guys a quick overview. To think of it like this, your bio is like if you log on to Netflix and you're looking at that huge assortment of movies, your bio is like that synopsis of a movie. Those first three lines are your header of your movie. A lot of folks are coming on here and they're posting their LinkedIn bio and nobody cares about that and nobody wants to read that. And you're trying to start out with the pitch of, hey, I'm so-and-so, so-and-so marketing. Nobody cares. We want to hear that there's something interesting enough about you that makes us want to click full bio, full profile after reading those first three lines. So those first three lines, you've got to think of them like the headline to your story or an advertisement for a movie. Those first three lines are very, very important. And if you don't take that real estate seriously, it's going to impact the way in which you engage on this platform. If you're skipping lines, if you're cluttering those first three lines with a bunch of nonsensical stuff, it's really not going to draw people's attention. You want to insert your personality. You want to, you want to start out with an attention grabber. That might be your first line to grab their attention. And it doesn't necessarily have to go in this order. And let's say your second line might be something that pertains to something that's personal about you, what your personal interests are, what your overall philosophy or ideology is or whatever that is, right? And now your third line should really be a call to action that's going to make that person say, okay, I wanna hit full profile. And that fourth line in your bio has to be blank because there's nothing going there. So when you're crafting your bio in your notes, the first three lines, you're going to go with your first three lines. That fourth line is going to be blank. That fifth line is what we call in our room, and our room is called talk your shit. That's where you be, and I'm sorry for folks who are offended by that terminology. That's where you begin to talk your shit. And in talking your shit, that means sell, uh, telling the narrative of your story, why it is that you're on Clubhouse, what, what you hear, what value you expect to add here and what your hobbies and interests are and so forth. And when you look at those emojis, do not take them as a joke because you've got to think of emojis like this as, think of it as digital hieroglyphics or graffiti. Those mo emojis are searchable by the algorithm. The algorithm looks for interests, it looks for keywords, topics, and it looks for um, other data within your bio so that folks can search for you, but folks can also search for you by those emojis. So you need to learn to speak emoji on this platform because it's very, very important. If you go out there with that dry bio with no emojis, it's not very fun to read. And if you go out there with a bio that's excessively emoji driven, nobody wants to read that because it's cartoonish. So you've got to develop a style that makes sense for you. And it's great to look at other people's situation and screenshot this and screenshot that. But ultimately, you should come up with something that's authentic for you, whatever that is. And you, you've got to be very clear in what your purpose is on Clubhouse. 
what your goals and objectives are. If you're here for to pitch a product or service, it's okay to pitch a product or service within your bio after you've given me some context for why I care about your product or service. Because if you just walk up to me, just think of it like if this was an actual physical club, if we were in a nightclub and the first thing you did is walk up to me and I go, hey, how are you? And you say, hey, my name's Christina. Just want you to know that I'm from so-and-so marketing and I do this and I do that. I'm running away from you as fast as I can get away from you. Because I'm like, who does that? But if you have an actual conversation with me, and you let me know some things about you and I discover that we have some hobbies and some interests that are in common, then I'm, then I'm a little more engaged. I wanna hit that full bio. I wanna learn a little more about you. I wanna hit you, follow on there. I even wanna go so far as click on, I wanna know whenever you're talking in a room or in Clubhouse. I wanna go so far as hit your back channels on Instagram and Twitter so that I can engage with you behind the scenes you know, and we can have more discussion than we actually had on Clubhouse. But if you're not getting that, if you're just coming on here thinking from the mindset of an influencer, where you want to amass a huge amount of individuals that are following you, it's going to mess up your algorithm. You're going to find yourself in rooms and in conversations that are of no interest to you because you've just been following people for the numeric metric as, as opposed to what matters on Clubhouse, which is the meaningful metric. And you're going to have to start unfollowing folks because otherwise your timeline is terrible. So I, I just think that people need to change the mindset that they come into this space with and stop thinking of this as Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter, because it's none of those things. Hope that makes sense. That was great. That was great. Elena, I'd like to jump in and add something too. Um, one thing I agree is I've just kind of always listened to the bio rooms I've gone in and said, like, how can I make mine better? And I know I have to, you know, I'm always learning. Um, I use this platform as a learning modality, but also I've noticed um, I've been on this since the you know middle of January and my business has grown exponentially, um, but I've had to take risks, like start my own rooms. Um, so people know what I do and start my rooms and invite people that are interested in what I do, people that follow me. Um, I fight child trafficking. And so I started rooms on that topic. It might not be a really fun topic, but there was no pitching. Um, people had to come to me because they shared my same interest. So con like Matt Anders was saying at the beginning of this call, connecting with those that share your same um, mission or your same drive or have your same interest um, has helped a lot. And so you, um, I've spent time connecting with people that are also passionate about giving back. And that helped a lot. Yeah, your bio is important. But the authentic conversations that happen when you host a room and are vulnerable, it can be really scary. But I have followed people that have been on here as long as I have, and they do a room daily or they do a room once a week. And there'll be rooms where there'll be like nobody there. And then there'll be rooms where there's like 500 people there. It just depends. But getting out there and using this platform to be vulnerable um, and the authentic connections I've made around the globe have truly impacted my business. So can I, just can I ask to a add that. Oh. Sorry, can I ask a question, Cam? Actually, so um, I'm. It's more like a nonprofit organization. I'm currently uh, thinking of is uh, I'm trying to create an epilepsy awareness community, and the question is for me: How you feel not shy to build these relations? So I find the people with whom I want to give and organize an event, but I feel shy to get in touch with them and to talk about these topics. And so how do you approach these people? That's the question. Thank you. And I have talked to other people that have um, started their own rooms and it's totally 100% natural to feel shy, to reach out and to be vulnerable because um, I think it was Sham that was saying earlier, this is not like other platforms. You don't get time to add a filter, to pretty up whatever you're gonna post. It's just, you can feel each other's energies and voice um in the rooms and so people do feel shy I, i'm not a shy person but i feel shy every time i go to start a room so just, just know that people on the other end that are talking to you and connecting with you have felt that exact same way and there's this um, i've noticed a really um, understanding authentic place um, in clubhouse where people are really um, forgiving and if you make a mistake it's okay we've all been there and made mistakes but you the being shy part um, everybody feels it too so it's natural. I would I would just add, do it anyway. 
because when I get into a room, I want you guys to know you make look at follower count and all that and think, oh, this guy's comfortable. No, sometimes when I get into a room, before I even go onto the stage, I actually throw up, physically throw up from just nerves. And, but I do it anyway. And every time that I do it, it gets a little easier and I get a lot more comfortable putting myself out there. But it's either that or the alternative. And the alternative is if I just sit there and I don't interact, I don't engage, I have things that I could add value, but I don't say anything. And then I leave that room feeling half full, just with a bunch of notes, like a lot of folks may leave this room with, and you don't do anything with those notes. No, you've got to get involved. You've got to do it anyway. You've got to do it scared. You've got to do it unprepared. It's just like riding a bike. You're going to fall. You're going to feel uncomfortable. When that mic opens, your voice is going to quiver a little bit. You're going to stumble over your words. You're going to feel like you're stuttering. And you're going to be using those little, uh, I don't know, I don't know, um, 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 that's going to happen. But you've got to get comfortable being uncomfortable if you ever want to be able to authentically walk in your truth, whatever that truth is. Awesome. Hey, Patrick. Um, I know we kind of thanks a lot. Me, but I want, wanted to ask if you had any thoughts on this. If he's there, Patrick, are you there? If not, we'll move to Sarah. Hey, this is a great platform, and I really appreciate you having this room. Um, I'm going to just um, echo what Sham said. It's just about building a conversation around um, who you are and what you bring to the table because nobody wants to hear your pitch all day long. Um, and I'm, I'm probably the worst for it, but I'm trying to become better at it and totally have a fear of speaking. I was a dyslexic child, so um, it's one of those things that you just learn to grow from, and I'm just excited to be here. Awesome. Frank, did you um, did you have any questions that you could help we could help with? Well, I, I can speak from my personal experience on here, what Clubhouse has done that might be able to help some others. Um, April, thank you for pinging me in here. Um, for me, I'm a, I, I've done various different things within Clubhouse. I came in the beginning trying to figure out what it was, how I was doing it. And I started getting into most of the uh, the uh, how to make money and you know pitch your business and stuff like that. And for me, it was a benefit because, and when I say this, anybody please understand where I'm coming from. I am a veteran of the United States Marine Corps. Us veterans and military, we think differently and we speak differently. And we go in, and I went into these rooms. And then you talk about your business and then you turn around and have a one-on-one -on -one with them. And they're trying to tell you how to totally revamp what you've done and how you think and what your product is takes it away from the whole reason why I even started a product. And I was like, they, you know what? I, I, I appreciate it. it. It helps. It answers. It gets, you know, added the value to the, the situation. But what I turned around and did as of course, in the military and abandoned community, we, we do tend to stick together and we do try to find those that are in our wheelhouse of our mindset and the way we think. So I started looking for veteran oriented rooms, came across a veteran club. And in return, I ended up not only being able to take my business in connection with, um, you know, working with other people in other rooms, so I was able to take my business from a sole proprietor to getting my LLC on February set, February 10th and then getting a business coach to help me write a business plan. And I was able to connect with uh, somebody that does crowdfunding geared towards law enforcement and first responders and military in order to be able to um start crowdfunding to get my business to the next level so i can be able to ship my product and it has been of going in there and just mostly beginning listening and getting you know finding out who resonates with you going to a room 
listen to what they got going on and then, you know, try to get to them on the, on the back end. But go in there and be authentic and tell them oh, you know, exactly what you're doing. Because I am, I call myself, I'm the resident crayon in a clubhouse because of my what I do and the way I do things. But, and now I am moderated a, a room on every Saturday that past two Saturdays have gone over six hours to helping veteran and male spouses, you know, with coming in. What do you do? What do you got going on? What do you need help with? And we connect them with people in the military aspect and not, and in the civilian world that we know that can help them get where they need to be in their business. And that's how Clubhouse has helped me. Frank, you and I need to have a conversation offline because I am fixing to launch a product for military and law enforcement, and that would be a great connection. Yeah, Frank, I just want you to be encouraged because folks that come into my room that are former military, what I always share with them is that you guys actually are the alphas at the top of the pole when it comes to this because you guys not only know how to follow through on an order, you know how to take an order and you guys are very mission oriented. So I think that you guys have developed a very specific skill set that I think adds exceptional value. So for those of you who are former military, don't feel like that because you've been, um, you might might have been away for a few years and you're just coming back and you might feel a little shell shock. Don't feel like because that time spent away uh, puts you at a disadvantage, actually it puts you further along and higher on the totem pole than you actually realize. Yeah, exactly. And, and one of the things is, is you know, there's 1.3 million um, members of the, of the active military, not including the total number of veterans have already served. Out of that, it is estimated by the Small Business Association that 45% of veterans, once upon getting out, will become entrepreneurs. And it, it's, 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 we're a small number, we're a small group, but you know, 45% that you decide to go in the entrepreneurial world is, is a big factor. Thanks, Frank. Yeah, and I've been in some of your rooms. I uh, second the fact that you have created something really cool here on Clubhouse for veteran entrepreneurs to jump in on. And I uh, thank you for your service. And I wanted to jump over to Queen and see um, how she's been using Clubhouse to grow her business. Hey, April, thank you so much for inviting me up to the stage. I was just gonna listen in, but I do know how important it is to give that value. So yes, hi everyone, I'm Queen Celeste. They do call me, call me the Seance of Clubhouse. And when I say that, I'm talking about Paul Davidson. After he watched how I moderated my rooms, he put me into the private room and he said, yes, you are the Seance. So I take that on with pride. Um, I love Clubhouse. I was not even gonna join. I know I'm not the only one on this app who says that. Um, I heard Medina speaking earlier saying, you know, uh, how do you speak and how do you be so confident? And, you know, I always tell my people because I've only been on this app. This is my uh, this is my fourth week on this app. And I will say uh, at first I was lost. Like I didn't really know what I was doing. I knew that the app was here, but I didn't really know the, uh, how valuable this app was and how uh, instantaneously you can connect with others. So uh, my first week, I was kind of in the follow, follow rooms, using it the wrong way. I didn't know what I was really doing. So after I stumbled upon a smaller group of four people, we really, we just built our relationship and we kind of just ran a room that attracted like-minded people and we just stayed in connection with each other. So, um, you know, I just like to empower everyone to stand in their power, be who it is, uh, give their voice, let it be heard. I always say that I'm probably the most shyest person in the room. <laughs> Even when, you know, sometimes if I get invites to the stage, I'm like, oh my God, April's inviting me. Should I join? Should I not? And I already know, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time I am always moderating. Like that is really how I grew on this app. Um, I like to teach everything about being a moderator from start to finish. Uh, here on Clubhouse, I like to teach how to use the app properly. I've found out different tips and tricks of how to use uh, certain controls that a lot of people don't know about. And I just like to give them that information. I host different trainings. And as I started doing that, 
people just gravitated towards me. They're like, oh my gosh, your voice, you know, your vibe, you're so positive. I, lo- I just love everything. So, you know, just creating your own, um, you know, type of community, open up those rooms that you, that you want to talk about, that value that you want to give. I know uh, someone was in here earlier and she, I was looking at her bio and I saw that, she, uh, she, you know, she was asking about how you can go about, you know, running your rooms to get your clients, but run the rooms that will attract your clients. For example, if you are someone who's trying to promote your, uh, your marketing business or so, don't hesitate to open up your own room and, you know, um, title it struggling businesses or uh, what, how, why are you struggling or stop struggling in your business? The people who are struggling and need your help are going to come to that room to see what you're talking about, right? But not only that, a lot of people open up rooms and then they're unsuccessful. So I always just say, build that build that community. You know, when you're in a room, it doesn't matter if if you're a moderator, if you're a speaker, if you're in the, uh, in the audience, take a look around the room, tap on the faces that you see, read our bios, uh, you know, and see who you might be able to connect with and collaborate with because, I'm telling you, it may, don't let these little numbers on Clubhouse fool you. Even on Instagram, you know, we have lots of power behind who we are. And, uh, you know, just the simple of clicking someone's bio and reading it through, right? When you're thinking that way, you want to make sure that your bio is set up. So I love that information that Sham gave earlier. Cami also gave some great tips as well. So I am definitely here for it because it's just amazing what this app can really do. And there's a lot of people that You know, they don't understand the power of their app. They don't understand the power of the voice and the story that they have to be told. And, you know, I like to be that person to say, look, use your voice, you know, start that room. Don't be afraid. Start that club, gain your community. And ultimately, you'll start to gain those people that that you attract, that you want to network with, that you want to collab with. And that's really what I do. Like any room that I that I step into of people that I've either uh, trained or built a relationship, as soon as I step in there, they're like, queen, queen. It's because they know me. They value the information that I have to give. Like I, I practically live on Clubhouse and I know I'm not the only one. So today I'm trying to get back to Instagram, do some postings, but you know, sometimes we're here, we're putting in the work and we're doing it. So I just want to encourage everyone to use their voice, stand in their power and give the value that you have to give. Even if you feel like you're not an expert, don't worry about that. Give your information, let your voice be heard and let the people decide. So thank you so much, April, for, uh, you know, letting me, inviting me up to the stage. I'm happy to be here and I'm happy to help anyone who needs any help. So, you know, take a look at my bio, message me if you have any questions. I am here. Thank you, Queen Celeste. Hey, just real quick follow up. Can, there's a lot of new people in the audience and I just wanted you to maybe talk about like how scary it is a little bit or even like having a small room. Like there's some hesitation around starting a clubhouse room just because of the numbers. Maybe they don't have the following yet. Can you just talk about maybe the power of having a small room? Oh, yes. Smaller rooms are actually the best. That's how I really built my connections. Like, I don't even go to the bigger rooms. If I do go to a bigger room, it may be because I was pinged in there and I like to show support. So when I am pinged, I'll go and then they make me a moderator. So I say, okay, you know, let let me stand here, show some love for a little bit. But for the most part, um, that's even how I met Paul Davids, uh, Paul Davidson. He came to our smaller room. Now that story is a little, it's a little bit different. He wasn't on his account. He was with one of our uh, members who was in our room and he was in Cancun at the time, which makes it very special because he wanted to listen in on the room that we had running while he was in Cancun on vacation, you know, and I was, I was just so honored, but um, yes, the smaller rooms are the best. Those that's where you can kind of build your true relationships. When you are in the bigger rooms, it's hard for you to get a chance to speak. You know, sometimes there's a, depending on the, um, the room itself, whether it's like a panel discussion or a Q and a, that will kind of uh, let you know the amount of people who will be on the stage. Sometimes you get invited up to speak. Sometimes they move you back down to the audience. So I think, um, you know, just finding a room where you feel comfortable enough to speak. A lot of rooms that I'm in, people come to the stage and like, oh my gosh, this is my first time speaking, but I feel so comfortable. You know, you want to make those people feel comfortable. Feel comfortable in those smaller rooms. Don't hesitate to go in and to when someone invites you up, take their invite and join, you know, unmute your mic and speak. People are there to to hear you they're there to you got to think about it we are all this is an active app you know we are all on stage we're all talking we are active right now no matter even if you're at work 
or you know you're doing something doing laundry we are all active we can if we're on stage we can press the mute button unmute button right so take that and use it to your advantage uh show the people who you are so the smaller rooms they're the best for um for collaborations and networking because you get more of a chance to speak right so versus you know people you giving your 30 second pitch they move on to the next person okay good next next person okay next you know you don't get a chance to speak. Now, when you're in the smaller rooms, you can give your piece. Others can hear you. Others can respond. And you can not only that, um, tap on their profile and don't be afraid to message people on this app. I always say that. doesn't matter where you are in the audience. Tap on that profile, message them, and let them know how you want to connect. Now, I advise for people to stay away from the word clubhouse. You know, try not to use that word. We all know clubhouse and Instagram are both in competition with each other. So say if you guys wanted to work with April, you want to run a room with her, you would just simply ask, hey, April, I loved hearing you speak today. Would you be would you want to collaborate with me in a room on and women empowerment? right? You want to be direct with that person, let them know how you want to work with them. And that will help you to build your genuine relationships. Um, even if you're just messaging someone to let them know how great the room was, that helps the moderators feel good. Not only that, it gives you credibility to say, wow, okay, someone's paying attention to what I have to say, right? Stay connected. That's what you guys really, really have to use this app for. And those smaller rooms will really help you to build those relationships because you will feel more comfortable to come up to the stage. I know when I started my first room, you know, I didn't know what I was doing when I <laughs> actually, I'll give you guys a really quick story. I don't want to take up too much time, but when I opened my first room, I didn't even have a topic. <laughs> so when I opened it, people were coming in and they're like, what's this about? What's this about? And I was like, no, don't come in here. You know, this is just a test room. And that was my, my second day on the app. I didn't know what I was doing, but now that I know how to kind of open up your room and be the person, but don't, don't be afraid. People are coming there to either support you, you know? So even if you are afraid, get a script, you know, think about what you want to start your room about, get a script. Okay. Write your script down gather some frequently asked questions. Um, if you're not sure what the frequently asked questions are, you can go to go to YouTube. Watch, don't even, you don't even have to watch a video on the subject. Go down to the questions and see what questions that they're asking. Um, go to Reddit, right? R-E-D-D-I-T. They ask so many questions on that forum. You know, choose some of those top questions that you see. Open up your room. And not only that, when you open up your room, I like to suggest to at least have three moderators on stage with you, your, one being yourself and then two other people. Choose someone that you trust. Choose someone that you've heard of. When you hear people speaking and you resonate with them, don't hesitate to hit the follow button because that's how you are going to, like they've been saying earlier, uh, Sheem and a couple of others have said earlier, you want to see those rooms in your hallway. You want to connect with like-minded people. The more people, a lot of my people like to follow me into rooms because they know I like to give uh, information. I see uh, Jabbar down at the bottom. I met him a couple weeks ago on this app. He's, he's part of the room that I'm speaking of that we run. Um, we're, we call it a family room. We're family. We're connected. We don't go anywhere without supporting each other, you know? So that's what we do. And those are the relationships that you really want to build in. It's best to build them in the smaller rooms. And the last thing I will say is that I've had a lot of people come into our smaller room and they will all, they were also um, admit that they like to come to smaller rooms because they like the more genuine connection versus a big crowd. You just watching and not being able to give that information. Uh, but yes, I advise everyone to stop being a fly on a wall at least some point in life. Open up your own room. Be confident. Choose, you know, I challenge everyone in here to choose two people that you want to message and choose, ask them if they want to moderate with you. You know, I give classes on moderation, so definitely reach out to me. I'm, you know, I'm open. I'm here. But I really just want everyone to give to use their voice, use that power, even if it is in a small room. Start in that small room. It's best to do that. That way, when you make mistakes, who's going to see it? Five people, 20 people. Perfect. That way, when you're doing it consistently every day, every time or every week, they are going to get used to you. Okay. You're going to build your community. Then that way, when you have 500 people, you're going to be a pro. Okay. So that's just my little piece. Thank you so much, April, for having me speak. <laughs> that, that was Absolutely. awesome. I, I, what I wanted to, what I wanted to say as well is what you said about just starting a room, like everybody in here that has less than 100 followers should just do that anyway. Um, you can you first of all, you build the best relationships that way, because if people are starting out with you, um, they get to know you on your journey. So at the end of the day, even if you were networking in real life, how many of those people could you really, really build a relationship with anyway, if it's your, you're at some conference or whatever, you know, five, maybe people, six. 
So you get to build with those people and, and have good conversations and mess up in front of them. And they get to know the real you. And then like, just pick a topic, you know, something about and start a room. Like, you know, I, I've done dad joke rooms just for the fun of it. Um, you can start a joke room. You can start a comedy room. You can start any kind of review room and then just start looking at who shows up and you start to find your tribe in that. And then you can also search for other people with the same interests as you. All you got to do is kind of go through the search function and find entrepreneur, mom, dad, uh, parent, whatever you are that you want to kind of get to um, associate with while you're on the app, you start looking and keyword searching those people and you'll start to build up your tribe in no time. And don't be afraid to moderate or ask somebody to moderate or bring somebody you just started to vibe with it from the room up to help you moderate because that's how these relationships get built. So thank you for that. Uh, yeah, I, I, I wanted to I wanted to add something. Sorry, Frank. Uh, if you wanted to go ahead, you could go ahead first because I wanted to add something about people's intellectual property, but you could go ahead, Frank. If you and, you know, touch off what Queen and Jason just said is, you know, go in a room. Don't be afraid to ask the question. You know, a lot of the times we say, and it is cliche, you know, the, the only wrong, que the, the wrong question is a question not asked. And then your question may spark somebody else's, you know, question, a similar aspect and give them the answer they need. By doing that, and this is, I know it's an overused word, but it is so true. You're going in there, you're adding value um, in any way, shape or form, just by even asking a question that you, you need the answer to. And you never know that somebody else may need that. And and then I'm along the lines of going to start a room. When I started the room that I started, it was not that I, I know everything about, you know, veteran and male spouses, me and entrepreneurs. I am still learning. I'm still trying to figure out. But whenever I sat in a lot of these other rooms, everybody's talking about mastermind, mastermind, mastermind. So I started looking into it. What in the God's green earth is really a mastermind? Because I had no clue. So I'm like, all right, we're going in there. We're just talking. We're seeing what we, you know, who needs help or talking about what our wins are and, you know, be able to connect people. I'm like, all right, here we go. Let's see what I can do. The first week, it was just a test week to see if it would do anything. I was in there for an hour and a half. All of a sudden, week two went for six hours and 15 minutes because I had other people in there helping me moderate the room and keep it going. This past Saturday, I'm recovering from COVID. I was actually literally during the, during the room, got trouble breathing and went to the ER and still was while I was in the ER trying to, you know, help out and be in the room, had other people going on it. That room went for seven and a half hours and it was not really hundreds and hundreds of people all the time. It was one person coming in, you know, gradually people were coming in. It was a relatively small room, but we kept it going for so long that a lot of people on their availabilities was able to come in, tell us what they got going on, how they supported the military and what they needed help with and came out of there with multiple, you know, connections. And that's how it's worked for me. And that's just one way that I can say, hey, you know, based on you hear a lot of people saying similar things in different ways. And it, it's a very good thing. And I, I tell people whenever I say about Clubhouse, um, radio meets networking on crack is the way I describe it. So thank you. Um, I just wanted to um, particularly speak to those of you who have um party hats and you're new onto this platform. I wanted to welcome you guys, but I also wanted to give you guys uh, um, a word of caution on Clubhouse, and that is about protecting your intellectual property, things that are proprietary to your brand. Oftentimes what happens is your well-intentioned and, and your enthusiasm in going to, into a lot of these rooms, you may share things that are proprietary proprietary to a brand that you're in the process of building. Maybe you still haven't formed a, a file that trademark or that patent or that copyright. And because you're so enthusiastic in being in this room that you share things that perhaps you should not have. And what oftentimes happens is that there are folks who are lurkers that are in some of these rooms, just like anywhere else. And they listen for this information and what you have on here is you have people who consider themselves virtual realist, realtors. And what they do is they listen in for you to mention anything related to your brand and any of your intellectual property. And they go and purchase all your domain names and they cyber squat on them waiting for you to uh, reach out to them so that you can so that you can buy them at a, at, at a price that they mark up. Now, I'm not hating on anyone 
who is who has a hustle of being a virtual real estate broker. But what I'm saying to you as an intellectual property owner is to be a lot more mindful and diligent in the information that you share, not just on Clubhouse, but beyond Clubhouse. It's great to have conversations and so forth, but some things that are proprietary, you might wanna leave those for back channel conversations. If you connect with an individual or group of individuals, and maybe you take that conversation to Instagram or to Zoom, or Facebook or on the telephone or wherever, and you have those more one-to-one -one or one-to-small group conversations. But if you're jumping on stage in front of a group of 500 plus people, and you're sharing your big, great idea, that one idea that you've been toiling away for all throughout COVID, and you just jump out there and say the name and all the proprietary information, and then you find yourself seeing a similar product a week or two after you've said that, the person that you have to blame for that is yourself. So I want you guys to really be diligent in protecting your intellectual property and don't allow yourself to get so caught up in the enthusiasm of being able to share. Recognize that there are unfortunately some individuals on here that are in the cap zone. And what we call the cap zone is that those are individuals that are on here who present themselves as being something that they actually aren't. And I don't particularly see why folks do that, but people do that. You know, people uh, hide behind avatars and say, hey, I do this, I do that, I do this, I do that. But in our rooms, we always press people for their receipts. Let me see the proof. So. What I would advise each of you is it's great if a person says they can do this, that, and the other, but see those receipts and make sure that those are credible receipts. And don't just go off of somebody's bio or someone's um, Instagram or whatever, or how great their photo looks. Do your due diligence and find out if this person has actually delivered what they say that they can deliver. Thank you, Sham. I appreciate that. I'm just going to reset the room real quick. I don't know if Jeremy's back yet, um, but what this room is yep, about. Just is, got back. Oh, good. <laughs> good. You can help chime in a little bit. So um, I was just refreshing the room and just letting people know that we are talking about how to use Clubhouse to grow your. I was going to add something with what Sham just said. Um, I am about. 16 months into a patent and for 14 of the last 16 months I did not speak speak a word of what I was doing in any intellectual property mindset because of the fear of someone coming after and getting to the market before I could get there um, and those are the hardest 14 months that there are when you're waiting to have to refile for your defense of your patent um, so i I encourage, just like Sham said, don't give your information away. Don't trust anyone. I hate to say that, but it, you've got to validate who the people are around you um, before you let them in your circle, even on a platform like this. Absolutely. And I, I stepped back in, uh, caught the tail end of what Sham was sharing, but wanted to emphasize the importance of that because I think that was... Uh, a little bit understated actually but what he was sharing was absolute fire because there is a lot of con artists on here as, as much as there's some amazing people there's also a lot of sharks out here who are trying to scam people trying to steal your ideas um you know so if you're getting out there and, and looking into the people who are presenting opportunities to you to make sure they're actually legit like look if somebody's doing millions of dollars or you know tens of millions of dollars like like a lot of the people claim there should be some evidence of that online. So just approach things with a healthy dose of skepticism. So I just wanted to point out, Sham, thank you for sharing that. That was great information uh, that I think a lot of people need to be aware of. Hey, Sham, just Sarah, sorry, Sarah, just to let you know, I'm, I'm, I'm DMing you on Instagram. I might be able to help you with some of that. I'm a former firefighter. My dad's a police chaplain. Um, I'm also in some, some other stuff with VC funding possibly. So I'll just hit you up on there and we can connect. Um, and yeah, you can check, and you can definitely check all that out. Check me out on Google or ask Jeremy about me. He knows a little bit about me. 
<laughs> I don't think I'll steal your idea. I'm just saying that. But, but <laughs> well, my patent and, attorney would fight you for it. But. Well, yeah, you know that 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 also happens too. But no, I'm just kidding. But I'm yeah, I'm gonna reach out to you on on uh, Instagram. Thanks. That sounds great. Thank you. I just wanted to say hi and thank you so much, April, for having me on the stage. I just I listened in a bit late and I'm going to have to jump. But I wanted to say that I love the title of this room and I could not be more thrilled than w with um, the vibe and the positivity of Queen's message. Um, there is such a beautiful um, lead in, you know, exploring rooms, listening to people. And I, I perfectly agree with, you know, having to do your diligence and coming, you know, into every meeting of new people with a healthy dose of skepticism and, you know, being on your guard. But the beautiful thing of what Clubhouse has done um, to grow businesses or maybe just to expand networks is that it has created a sense of community where people are able to voice ideas or exchange questions and get insight from people who maybe have a little bit of an advanced insight or just know specificities of their industry a bit more. I, I personally work in a very classical field um, that is very tangible um, and relies heavily on meeting people, looking at artworks physically. And when, when we do interact with a wider community, it's generally um, through Instagram because it's so image driven. But what I miss and everyone in my industry misses so much is being in touch with people, with clients, with galleries, looking at artworks physically and, you know, just enjoying this um, exchange and what Clubhouse has done. Um, and this is where I, I could not be, um, I could not agree more with what Queen said, is that there's this beautiful encounter and serendipity of bumping into people, looking at their profile, looking at, you know, what is it they do? How is it um, that they run their business? And this exchange and the idea of, you know, having rooms where you can just ask questions and the way that most rooms are moderated is so beautifully done. And there is so much respect to hearing people out and, and being able to ask questions without thresholds, without having to be ashamed of, um, you know, who you are, where you might ch uh, stand on a chain or a hierarchy. Um, and, and that's just what I wanted to say. So basically, it's just um, a very big thank you to the whole community. And thank you, April. Um, I'm going to have to jump, but um, that was really insightful. And uh, thank you so much for having me. Thanks for coming. Um, I wanted to go to FY. I know we've kind of bounced around her, so if she, if she had a question for I think I'm saying it right. Uh, is it F F -wa or E F -wa? or is she still there? <laughs> Hi, I'm right here. <laughs> it's Eva. It's Eva. Oh my it's gosh! I'm old, so sorry. Yeah, no, pro I, I get that a lot. It's just an old Swedish spelling for Eva. So, um, I live in Norway. I love this. This is amazing. I've traveled the world, live in many countries. I live in Norway right now, and so this is just such a gift to the world. Thank you all for what you have shared tonight. It's just uh, incredible. Um, I have some thoughts and concerns being a newbie here to Clubhouse, and maybe you could help me a little bit with that. Um, I'm a high, uh, high performance um, executive coach, um, meaning that I have since plenty of years. So I could start a um, number of rooms. I could share plenty of value. And then I'm thinking a lot of the time, like if I opened a room with the name um, uh, coping strategies for, for leaders, for example, or challenges, sol solve your challenges, and uh, stop struggling, like someone said earlier. Um, I'm just thinking as a, as a professional coach, um, I'm a bit concerned with dealing with sensitive information and confidentiality. Uh, there could be like collaboration issues, difficult communication situations and power fights. And I was listening in to another person today who where people just asked her a lot of questions. How do I say this? How do I communicate this? And it was 
really very personal everything and I was sort of thinking oh, what if they hear this or what if someone else who knows these people uh, hear this and you know um, any thoughts around that how to deal with that it would, would be incredible so if you're dealing with very sensitive information clubhouse may not be the app for those kind of conversations but another approach depending on exactly what you're talking about in these rooms is to open a private room. Um, are you aware of that option? Yeah. Okay. So that, depending on exactly what the conversation is going to entail, that may be a solution to what you're trying to accomplish. Um, you just, you know, you have to be careful about who you're going to invite into it, but it may be a case where you're talking about things that are so sensitive that you want it to only be you and that person. Um, then in mm -hmm. that case, Clubhouse wouldn't be the platform for those kind of conversations. Does that help? Exactly. Yeah, it does help. Um, all right. Yeah, let me let me share share this with you. So oftentimes I get folks who come into my room and because I do branding, they wanna they wanna share a lot of their proprietary information with me and get my feedback. And I, I usually stop them and I go listen, slide into my DMs and ask me your specific questions. Don't share it in the open room. And then sometimes those folks want to uh, get a little more in depth. And then I do a one-to-one -one coaching session with them. And I do that on Clubhouse in a lock room. And in a lock mm. room, I only invite that individual. And I let that individual know that I do rec I record my lock rooms. On Clubhouse, you cannot record a person without informing them, right? So yeah. when you, you, you have to physically verbally say to the person, be aware that this room is being recorded and uh, you have to advise as well in the descriptor of the room, like the title or the description of the room. So what I would suggest is that if you're having very sensitive conversations, invite those. If you're in a room where you're um, providing value to an individual and it seems like they want to discuss something that might be of a lot per personal nature, then you could say to that person, hey, why don't you slide in my room or you can start a locked room with that individual and you guys can have a small group or a one-to-one -one session. And I think that that's a lot better. And also within those rooms themselves, just to protect myself, like I said, I record my locked rooms because I want every person in the room to feel comfortable with what's said and expressed in that room. And then after the conversation concludes, I email them a copy of what we agreed to or said within the uh, context of that room so that they can take that information and be able to plan, uh, apply that branded strategy beyond us just talking in that room because everybody can't always necessarily take notes, if that makes sense. Mm, absolutely, thank you so much. Um, so how could one then, I, I would believe that there would All be right. some general situations that you could frame. Would you know of any rooms that have that kind of setup or that I could learn from? I'm not clear, were you speaking specifically to me or, or can you elaborate a little more? Cause I wasn't clear on what the question was. Yeah, sorry. Um, I, I know that a lot of leaders struggle uh, to cope with everyday kind of situations in the, in their leadership. So how could I set up, would there be any other clubhouse rooms like that with that sort of an angle to help people cope that I could learn from? Or would you have any idea of how I could set it up so that it doesn't become so personal but valuable for them. Is it up to them to to choose how personal it becomes, or is it up to me as a moderator? It's it's look. It's just like a conversation. A conversation. You've got to think about it like this: is a dialogue. It's not a monologue. If it's a monologue, that's only one person talking. So because it's two people participating, it's a dialogue. So it's up for two or more in agreement that gather to have a conversation and a dialogue. So it should be you and that person in agreement. Now, let me give you uh, an idea for a room. 
let's say that you feel that a lot of leaders right now and people in leadership positions might feel themselves being overburdened and so forth, right? So let's say you start a room and the name of the room is Leaders Need Love Too, right? So if I'm mm-hmm. a leader in a leadership position, I'm going to be like, you know, that's absolutely true. Leaders do need love too. So I'm going to, and in, in your description of the room, you say something to the effect of, do you lead a, are you a team leader or a leader of an organization and oftentimes feel like you're under supported and you just need a place where you can decompress and express yourself? Well, tap in and join this, right? So now mm. when the individuals get into that room, you're going to continuously reiterate that this is a safe space for people to be able to share their, their um, concerns and their challenges as leaders and be advised that this is a safe space and what state what's said in this space is supposed to stay in this space. And if you specifically as a person in the audience feel that you have something that is of a personal nature and you'd like to go deeper, then feel free to slide in my DMs and we can set up something. Does that make sense to you? Wow, yeah. This is so great. And it's so obvious when when you uh, say it. Thank you so much. This is fantastic. Yeah, I'll help a lot of leaders. Great. (laughs) Thank you so much. There was just one, one more question. That is, you say message them. How can I message people within Clubhouse? You don't message within Clubhouse. That's why you use what we call your back channels, which would be your Twitter or your Instagram. So if okay. a person wanted to send a message to you, they would probably send it to you as a DM on Instagram or they would be in your inbox on Twitter and you guys determine what's the best path forward and how you're going to further communicate. Whether you're going to tap in on the Clubhouse in a, um, in a closed room, which I would recommend, because it's a mm-hmm. closed room setting. You don't have to give out your personal phone number to that person. If you wanna protect that information, you could just say, hey, I'm gonna start a room at, um, let's say two o'clock. And you say, um, I'm gonna start the room at two o'clock. And the other thing, and when you're going into a locked room is they have to be following you and you have to be following them. Otherwise you can't ping them into the room. So then when you go to set up the room, what I when you right before you're about to uh, start the room, let's say it's uh, 158, right? So at 158, you're going to go to start a room uh, because you can't pre-set up the lock rooms, right? So you're going to go start a room and then it's going to ask you to add a topic and then you might say um, whatever you want to call a topic. The topic might be one-to-one session with Chris, right? And then it's going, and you're going to select um, lock room, and then it's, and then it's going to say um, let's go, or it's going to say uh, select pe- pick people that you want to add to the room. And then when you click that, you're going to scroll and search for that individual's name, and then you're going to click on their name, and it's going to ping them into the room, right? Mm. Now, and then, and then you, and then it says start room, and then you launch the room, and when the room launches you're gonna be in the room as the moderator and they're going to come in eventually and they're not going to be moderators. Now, uh, you can then make the moderators in the room too so that they can have the power of pinging and inviting other individuals into the room as well. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense, Sham. Thank you so much. You are really inspiring. Thank you for, for everything. You're welcome from my heart. Okay, thank you. All right, who who else do we have that's got some questions? It's me. All Hi. right. Hi, my name is Rebecca. Um, I've just become a huge fan of Sham and I've um, rewritten my bio while I've been listening and added some emojis and things because I didn't know whether they would be appropriate. And now I've realized that they are. And um, so thank you for that. I run two businesses. I'd like to run a club. I've just read the rules in the um, saying that you, you allowed one club at the moment. And I suppose there is some crossover between those two businesses. And I just wanted to ask um, when you have to have a room three ti- consecutive times, is it? 
over a three week period or a three day period or three times in one day. Um, if I co-host with somebody, does that count towards it? Um, or is it just, and um, if they had the room, would that, and, and I co-hosted with the other person and they had set up the room, would that go towards it? Just those little sort of bits and pieces um, to try and have some um, order to it, please. Thank you. So the last that I heard, and maybe somebody else has a more certain answer, is that they've actually removed that requirement. I'm not 100% sure about that. Does anybody else have uh, any more direct information on that? As far My as understanding is they did remove it, though. Okay, that's what I thought. All right, Rebecca, did that answer your question then? Yeah, so I'd, basically I don't have to set up three, three rooms. Is that correct? Is that what you're verifying? Yeah, it appears that that's not the case anymore. Um, I I mentioned that I thought they removed that. Sham said the same thing. So I, I think that's probably a pretty certain answer. So uh, if you just go ahead and, and apply for your room, I know that there is a pretty big delay on it right now because obviously everyone's, everyone's trying to get their own clubs and uh, they've got a pretty small uh, staff for Clubhouse. So it's going to take some time to get it. But I would say go ahead and just go ahead and try and apply for it right now. And where do you do that? Um, you go to a clubhouseguide.com. So that's clubhouseguide.com. And when you go on to clubhouseguide.com, you're going to scroll down and there's a section that says, I think it's like create a clubhouse or something like that. And when you click on that, you're going to apply for a room. You're going to name whatever your clubhouse is. Let's say... Um, the name of your clubhouse that you want to call it is Loving Leaders. You're going to call it Loving Leaders, and you're going to give a brief description of what your clubhouse is about. So you're going, in like 150 characters, you're going to say Loving Leaders is about supporting leaders uh, as they grow their businesses, right? And then they're going to also ask you for a, a, a theme and a date in which you're going to launch a room. This is uh, primarily for informational purposes, but you should put down a date and or like a day of the week or, and a time and a name of a room, but you're not going to be stuck to say you choose Friday 6 p.m. and now you're feeling like the only time you can have a room is Friday 6 p.m. No, it doesn't work that way. They just want to see that you're clear and that you have an idea around what exactly it is that you want to do here. And then once you're approved for your club, then you go about setting up your rooms on the dates that make sense to you. What I would say is that in the interim, while you're waiting for your club to be um, established, is that you follow other clubs and you take a look at how they set their clubs up, whether it be how they describe their clubs. A lot of clubs have rules for uh, interacting with the club. So I would suggest that you also develop the rules for your club, whatever those rules are particular for your specific club. I would say that you just open the notes document on your phone and you begin start writing out and fleshing out your ideas for what you ultimately want your room to be so that when your room is approved, then you already have the information in place and you can go from there. Hope that's clear. Hey, Perfect, hey, thank you. Hey, Sham, quick question you might know. Um, so I started I, st I started my own club a while back. So it, it I didn't really have to go through this, but I was wondering the wisdom of like when you get on other people's clubs and they, they allow you to start rooms under their names, if that's, if you've ever, if anybody's ever really had good results from that, because in a way, in effect, you're still getting access to some of those club members. And if you find the right club that, you know, could be mental health, could be influencer, or whatever. Like you get to know, be known a little bit of that. And then, you know, I, I, I make some people admins of my clubs for all that's worth just because I want to see them shine in whatever conversation they have. But I was just curious if anybody knew like what the benefit or disadvantage of was really of just getting in someone's club and starting rooms under that club name while you were waiting. I, I can tell you from that. I, I, I tried to apply for a club, I'm still waiting. But I attached myself to the Veterans Network club and right now that is the largest veteran club on clubhouse with i think 1.500 you know 
1500, you know, people that are on there. And that is where I host my room at. And anytime that you host a room under there, everybody that is in that club gets pinged, gets notified. And like I said earlier, that's how I was able to get rooms that have went six, seven and a half hours by keeping it going. And whenever they log on, somebody else is in the room, they look their notifications, they get notified they're in there and they jump in and they start asking questions. And it's been a major blessing for me. Not only am I, you know, personally building relationships and connections with people like April, but, you know, business wise and every aspect of it, I now have, you know, three or four people that just because of getting into that club and working with them that I consider as friends and we haven't even met face to face yet. So it is a major benefit for me. Thank you for confirming that because I figured it was just like Facebook clubs. If you got into a club and you were putting out a lot of product and a lot of value that people would just, why reinvent the wheel and try to think of your own club when one's already there that you can leverage and, 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 you know, um, engage in more than anybody else that might not know what to do with that club and just leverage that instead of just going to make your own club where now you got to build it up. You got to invite people, you know, it takes a long time. I would say do that first. If you already got that mindset, find the one that you relate to the most and try that out. Why not? I mean, it seems like it's a quicker way to do it and you still get the same result. That's just my two cents. Let me, let me give you an example that I think is the best way to probably explain it. Cause when I think of clubhouse, because I come from a background where I, I was actually a party promoter here in New York. Um, think of it from the perspective as if I'm the party promoter, I have, I have access to the big venue, right? The big, the, the club owner is only going to rent the venue to me because I've got the insurance and all that other stuff. And I've done events there in the past and I've got a large following. So they trust me enough to rent out their venue on Friday night, right? Now, now you are a young person who ultimately wants to have your own night in that club as well, right? However, the club owner doesn't trust you. They don't know you yet, right? So what you do is you become a sub promoter, meaning that you come along and you co-promote my events, right? And as you and I develop a working relationship, I eventually can vouch to the club owner, hey, you know, Jason's a good guy, you know? He's moderated rooms with me. Uh, the people that he bring into the room are quality people. And then what happens is as a result of that cross-pollination between the newer people that you bring into the fold, who are people that you know, that are people that would have never come to my event, and, and between the people that who um, are legacy folks who come to my event, who now are supportive of the things that you do, the rooms that you do, and so forth, when you start a room, now a lot of those folks want to join your room and they want to be part of what you've got going on because you've already established a credible relationship. Now, what happens is a lot of folks come onto this platform and they immediately want to start a club, but they start these clubs and they don't have the idea, ideas and so forth to build the infrastructure to grow the club. So now you just have a club only and you're the only one in the club. No one's coming by, no one wants to visit. And it's great that you've got a club, but what good is having a club that no one visits? So that's why it's important for you to build these partnerships and do these co-moderating of these different rooms now while you're in the process of waiting for a room. And even when you get a room, because a lot of those folks that are in other clubs are folks that are probably or would probably never ever stumble into your room or a room under your clubhouse. So it's an opportunity for you to get in front of an audience that you likely probably would not connect with, if that makes sense. So that, that kind of validates it further because I, I, I just think of myself, I, I follow people more than I follow clubs. Like I couldn't tell you all the people that are in the clubs that, that I'm in, uh, maybe a couple, but you know, it's normally one or two people when I see their name that I associate value with versus I'm in this club. So, you know, kind of like what you just said, you follow people, uh, you follow people rather than clubs and it makes more sense to jump in a popular club that's already popping and then make your name than to try to sit there on the street corner trying to start your own club when nobody's around you, there's no traffic and there's no attention on it. So th that kind of validated it for me, thank you. 
Awesome. Hey, before we go on to the next questions, I want to take a second to reset the room. Uh, what we're talking about here today is how to use Clubhouse to grow your business. But I also want to take a second to recognize the moderator. So I, I want to take a minute for each of you guys to go ahead and introduce yourself, tell the listeners a little bit about you, what you do, how you ended up here, all of that. Um, and I encourage everyone who's listening to go ahead and connect with these moderators. They're awesome people. They're all up here because they bring a tremendous amount of value. So that being said, April, you want to go ahead and kick this off? Hey guys, yeah, thanks for hanging out with us today, and um, thanks for Jeremy to Jeremy for hosting the room. Um, my name's April Caldwell, and I actually run a company called Faven, and Faven is a platform that books mobile businesses and artisans at local venues for curated pop-up shops. So you can kind of think of us as the Airbnb, but for small businesses. So um, if you have um, a product or a service that you sell from home or that you can do a pop-up shop for, please reach out to me, connect with me um, through Instagram. Um, I'm doing interviews for the platform that we're building right now. So, um, or especially if you have a storefront um, that you have unused space and you would like to rent out to local vendors uh, in your community. So just reach out and uh, thanks for listening with us today. And I hope we've been providing some value for you. Awesome. All right, Jason, you're next. You're up next, brother. Hey, thank you. Hey guys, I know it's a little noisy. I'm being Mr. Mom right now, but um, my name is Jason. I'm a retired Philadelphia firefighter, entrepreneur, or dadpreneur, if you want to call it that. Uh, that's the, the people I like to serve as you know, normally dads uh, who are entrepreneurs and then uh, firefighters, EMS workers, military guys in, in that kind of space that are, I guess, just, just getting started their business and actually working still on a job. Uh, since I went through that whole kind of phase of my life where I was working and being an entrepreneur, I was both an employer and an employee at the same time. I feel I have a unique perspective on how to help people with that the same way I did. So I was able to retire pretty early and now I, I pretty much do that full time and I'm able to be with my family and do all sorts of fun stuff and help people. So that's basically what I'm about. And, you know, if my bio is interesting to you, then feel free to connect. And if there's any way you think I can help you or somebody, you know, then also connect. That's it. Thanks. Outstanding. All right, Cammy, you're up next. All right. Maybe Cammy's not with us anymore. Sean, you've got the floor. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Sham Jones. Uh, most folks call me S. Dot. Kind of a pen name that I have because I've been a ghost collaborator on a lot of content for a number of years. Um, I've co-written, edited, and a lot of different things for a lot of New York Times bestselling books over the years. I had a lot of uh, publishing clients in that space. Um, just because I'm naturally gifted as a writer. Um, and after having done this for so long for other folks, one day I heard an individual um, accepting an award for a project that I did all of the work for, and that didn't sit well with me. And because I signed an NDA and a non-complete, non-compete, it wasn't something that I could publicly say, hey, that's actually my award, I deserve it. So I use that as a catalyst for me to say that I no longer wanted to do that for other folks because I didn't have any equity in those brands and I wanted to focus on mine. Um, so I am essentially a storyteller. I help both emerging and established brands learn how to tell their stories so they can sell their products and services in this um, socially driven marketplace. And that's it in a nutshell. It's it's not really that deep. Um, you guys could uh, look at my Instagram or anything else and kind of you'll get an idea of what I do. And um, that's it. Love it. That's a powerful backstory, man. I, I, I love how you kind of transition from, I guess, getting screwed, for lack of a better term, into a, uh, into a new path. So powerful. Love it. Thank you. All right. So I see we've got uh, Dr. Aaron... Is it Grable? Grable? Uh, Gravel. Gravel. Okay. See, there we go. <laughs> Thank you All for right. having for having me. My pleasure. All right. You had a question? 
Yes. Um, so I have been on um, Clubhouse now for probably about a month, and I started a uh, room. I've been starting it every week on uh, Monday Motivation, and it's been great. Like uh, I think going back to what Queen was saying earlier, I've met some amazing people that have joined me, and we now um, have four moderators, which is great. So me as a life coach, and then I have a fitness coach, a wellness coach, and a mindset coach all joining me, and we have great conversations. But what I'm finding is that we're still not really getting a lot of people coming to the room. So we'll put, you know, four or five people, which is great, but we would like to have more people to participate in the conversation. So I was wondering if you had any advice for me. And um, I just want to preface this by saying I have a client in three minutes. So I'm so sorry, but I will have to get off in three minutes. Thank you. Okay. So I have to hop off in three minutes as well. So I'll try and keep this super fast for you. And then maybe some of the others can chime in as well. But I assume you're probably pinging people into the rooms. Are you are you scheduling these ahead of time, or are they kind of like impromptu rooms? Uh, we are scheduling them ahead of time, and we're also um, because we're from uh, one's from Scotland, and then two are from across the United States. We're also putting it on our Facebook feeds as well as our Instagram feeds that we're going live on Monday at 7 a.m. Okay. Um, something you can try doing is inviting some higher profile people into the rooms because the way Clubhouse works. If let's say I'm following a particular person and they are in a room, when I go to that room, I'm going to, or when I go to Clubhouse in what they call the hallway, the first screen that you're on when you're, when you first get into Clubhouse, I will see that person's name in a room. So that could be a good way to draw some people into your rooms. And then as you start doing this consistently, not just bringing people in, but hosting the rooms consistently, um, you'll start to build up a bit of a following. But if you leverage that with bringing in higher profile people, you'll have a better chance of building these rooms up uh, as you're going along. Hopefully that helps. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I would add for you quickly before you leave is you want to take a look at the descriptions of your room. Nine times out of 10, it's the reason why you're not getting the traffic into your room. Look at some of the rooms that are drawing more of the type of traffic that you want to, that you want to attract. And then just... Um, you know, play around with the way in which you're describing the room. Also, you could um, look at using special characters and font because that oftentimes makes a room stand out as well. So you can go to uh, yaytext.com. That's Y-A-Y-T-E-X-T.com. And you can get some special characters there where you type in the name or whatever you're calling your room and it puts it in a fancy font and then you just drag it, drop that to your um to your notes and then you go about compiling the description of the room and your special characters and then you just grab the whole batch of it and pull it over to to set up in the room name and sometimes that makes the room stand out a little more using emojis in the title often makes it stand out as well hope that helped yes thank you that's very helpful and i i've really enjoyed being in this room so thank you awesome it's great to have you um, April, I have to step away again. Do uh, you want to run this for a little bit? Yeah, I have about 25 more minutes, so I can do that if anyone wants right. to stay in and jump on. Sounds good. Okay. Well, it looks like we've kind of gone through all of our speakers on stage. If there's anybody that wants to jump in or um, ask a question to the moderators or anybody in the audience, um, please feel free to raise your hand and jump up. Um, I see Jabbar's been kind of hanging down there in the audience. I want to see if he'll come up and um, jump into the conversation with us. And then if anybody else has I, any questions. I oh, could just ahead. pitch in being being new here. Like when you say ping people, that means letting people who follow me know that um, I'm hosting a room. Yeah. So if you're hosting a room and you hit that plus sign at the bottom, that's called pinging. And oh. you can just tag people to let you know that you are hosting a room and that you're available. And that usually lets them know, come join me. Um, sometimes they're already in a room, but you know, maybe they'll leave the room that they're in so that they can join your room instead. Uh huh. So that means no. having a lot of followers is a wise thing. Well, yeah. no, yeah. having the right followers makes the sense. Right followers. And, the, and the other thing is, and the other thing is, you don't want to become that person who, as soon as you start a room, you just pink everyone who's following you or you're following. 
because that's annoying. And sometimes my phone gets so many pings every day, I have to shut off the notifications because I say, um, clearly this person didn't read my bio or know anything about me, that they're pinging Mm -hmm. me into the room of a subject matter that has no interest to me whatsoever. That's why it's important that you follow people that have interests that are relevant to yours because otherwise you're going to be pinging let's say for instance that it's a woman's group meeting right and you guys are talking about things that are very woman-centered right and then you ping in Hmm. 10 guys and now here I am jumping into a room and just because I follow you and you follow me I'm like oh okay you know she's cool let me jump in there let me jump in Ava's room and I jump in there (laughs) And I jump in the room and then I'm like, whoa, there are like 80 women here. I'm the only guy. And then after a while, I start noticing the topic is not anything that a guy is interested in. And people, and I feel a little self-conscious. And now I'm like, you know what? I need to unfollow Ava because clearly she does not understand that that's not the room that's ideal for me. So you want to be Mm. um, cognitive of the fact of the folks of who you actually ping into the room. So that's why it's important that you have a connection to those who are following you and you're following them. And it's not just a bunch of random people, because then if it is, then you become one of those random ping persons. And if you notice my bio, I have a portion of my bio that says, do not ping me into your room if it's just you there because it's weird. And what happens is sometimes I'll be in a room and I may be moderating on the stage and it's a room with three or 400 people on the stage, right? And someone comes into the room and they look at my bio or they whatever. And then, then, they, and then it says, start a room with them. And then they ping me into a room and it's just me and them. And I'm like, okay, you pulled me off the stage and it's just you, and they're like, hey, yeah, I want to talk to you about my clubhouse bio. And I'm like, really, dude? Is that why you pulled Mm -hmm. me off the stage to talk to me about your clubhouse bio? Is that what we need to do Mm -hmm. right now? You could have DM'd Mm -hmm. me for that. So, you know, you want to also be respectful of the fact that other people, of other people's experience on clubhouse, and not just become an annoyance where you're just pinging people into the room just because you want to have a high number turnout. Wow, that's really a good input. Thank you for that. Um, can I then add another question? Um, yeah, and I just want to add something to that really quick too. Um, one thing that I've noticed is really helpful is if when you go into a room, um, I don't know if you're, some of you might turn into an addict like myself. There'll be days where I'm, um, you know, in conversations where I go from a room where people, I'm listening to people pitch, and then I go to a room where I'm listening Um, to filmmakers and directors because I'm producing a documentary. And so um, I uh, ran into something that happened yesterday that was interesting. Um, And one thing I would just say is pay attention to the title of the room. Um, So if you notice that someone's going off on a tangent and it's your turn to ask or you're a moderator, help the fellow moderators keep the room on topic. Because the reason that people here are here in the room with us is because they want to know more about the topic. So we're here today to talk about how do we grow um, our, how do we use Clubhouse to grow our business? And so just maybe um, trying to add value to the room and ask meaningful questions because chances are, if you have that question, a question, a lot of people are wondering the same thing too. And so I just really enjoy when people come in and they ask their question, it's direct to the point or they share a story that adds value to everyone in the room. And it, um, like, like Sean was saying that it really um, has to do with why you're there. It's not just something, something random. And Eva, did you have another? Yes, and I do hope it's uh, then uh, uh, adding value to this uh, room. Um, I'm not so big on Insta and Twitter, but the question would be, would you then advise so that I could grow uh, my business on Clubhouse, would you advise me to post something on LinkedIn or to Facebook that I'm starting a room, for example, or how does one go about that? You you would have to know what your community is, which which people from that community are actually on Clubhouse, because otherwise, that's like telling me about a product that I can't use. I mean, like, 
say for instance, because Clubhouse is uh, an app, an, an Apple base, um, it's it's right now for Apple users. I I would make fun of. I used to make fun of folks on Facebook and Instagram, and I'd be like, "Oh, really tapped into a great conversation." Sorry, you guys, the Android users, and it was just kind of like a joke within our community, right? Of the people that I was connected to, me making making fun of them. But you've got to know your audience. So if you're posting it on LinkedIn and you're not sure that the people on LinkedIn are folks that are on Clubhouse or even interested on being in Clubhouse, then it, it's kind of just like noise. People are like, why is she always doing these Clubhouse postings? No one's on Clubhouse. No one's using Clubhouse. No one cares about Clubhouse. You know, so you've got to know your audience and you don't just be a spammer out there. Just putting out information like, hey, hey, you know, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Because most people are inundated with so much information on a day-to-day -day basis and they have to develop these ad blockers and they filters. You don't want to be a person that people is putting on ad blocker and filter because you're just annoying talking about your clubhouse postings and this person is an Android user and they're like, I'm so sick of hearing about this clubhouse all the time. So know your audience. Mm, good point. I agree, but I've also seen um, people, I agree and disagree. I, I mean, I've seen people post about a clubhouse room that's coming up and I appreciate it because then I jump on, um, especially if it's people that I follow. So I think maybe just don't spam your audiences, but people don't know if you don't put it out there. So I think, um, I, know, I know personally, I've seen people post on clubhouse, my friends that are on here and I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that they were on, which is weird, but I follow a different um Sometimes I follow different people, a totally different uh, group of people than I do on Facebook and Instagram because I'm on Clubhouse for a different reason than I'm on Facebook and Instagram. It, I don't necessarily need those exact same followers. I'm here to build global community of connections for my business and to help people. So um, my demographic is different on Clubhouse. So I, I, I don't know. Sometimes I have friends on Facebook that I that I didn't even know were on Clubhouse. So I kind of think um, I would, especially if I was starting brand but that's just my opinion so it might not be worth anything so. no no i'm not saying don't post on those platforms i'm saying when you post on those platforms be clear 